Hello everyone, Sableye here and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be talking about Entei and how to use it effectively in the VGC metagame. And of course we have to start off by looking at its ability, which in my opinion is one of the main reasons you are using this over another fire type like that Incineroar. And Inner Focus just makes you immune to Intimidate and being a fast offensive presence like Entei, it really appreciates not being able to get Intimidated. Then you also have the added effect of not being able to flinch, with once, which once again works really well in conjunction with being that fast physical attacker that they're going to want to fake out and that they just can't be, that they just aren't able to fake out, All right? I think we have to look immediately at its signature move in Sacred Fire, being a 95% accurate move with a 50% chance to burn a target and a base 100 attack stat, or a base 100 attack I should say. And this is incredibly strong, right? Whether you are using this to swing games in your favor by going for a burn, whether you're just going to get an additional burn, being able to burn 50% of the time is incredibly strong in a physically dominated metagame, right? You hit the Sacred Fire into a Shen Pao, it normally lives on Sash. Well, now there's a 50% chance that Sash is just useless for it, so to speak. There's tons of other options for that. Maybe you're burning a Rillaboom, maybe you're burning an Incineroar if it Terra's, right? There's tons of options. Maybe you're burning that Ogre Pond right? Or at least the water ones, I should say, right? Before they're capable of attacking you and all of a sudden now you're living, right? Just that 50% chance to burn is massive. Yes, the 5% miss percent hurts or miss chance sucks, but I think the upside is just so strong from Sacred Fire. You absolutely need to have it. And then you get stuff like Extreme Speed to close out the move pool. Big Priority is really, really strong. You get Stomping Tantrum, if I could type. Um, you get Stomping Tantrum to basically get around those fire types that would normally be able to sit in front of you fairly well. Those rock types that necessarily would want to sit in front of you, they can't do that anymore. Then you get uh, access to some other cool stuff like uh, Crunch, Stone Edge, Flare Blitz if you're looking for an 100% accurate move. A and then you just pair that on 115 attack and 100 speed and you're, you're kind of gaming. Right, you are kind of gaming with this. Uh, we'll jump into set one, and once again, guys, with these sets, every single one of these is there's room to play. These are example sets, tons of room. It's also early, early format, so things will adapt over time as well. But to start things off, we're starting with Choice Band, and this is basically I am going to send damage, I am going to use this as a fire type Dragonite. And I don't normally like the Dragonite comparison because, well, yes, they do do similar things. It also it's kind of a different mod in how it functions a little bit, right? Because you have that big fire move as opposed to that big dragon move. And you also have the chance to burn things. You don't necessarily need to have Shen Pao beside this thing for it to do massive damage. Not that you needed it with Dragonite. I just think you would get something different out of Entei than you do with Dragonite, you know? Anyways, you know, with Dragonite, uh, sorry, with Dragonite, if you're missing the KO, it's probably bad. But with Entei, if you're missing the KO, it's not the end of the world because chances are you're either burning or, you know, you're not just dying, you know, you don't, you're not losing to the Fluttermane like the Dragonite is, right? Shen Pao, Dragonite both lose to Fluttermane. Shen Pao, Entei both don't lose to, to Fluttermane, right? I feel like that's the difference there. Like, it's that type synergy with Shen Pao works so much better than it did with Dragonite. However, Dragonite probably is the more spammable mod, right? But like I said, you're just going to go Sacred Fire, E-Speed, Stomping Tantrum. Those are the three main ones you're going to see on a Choice Bandit set. And you're going to want to go for that Terra Normal Extreme Speed and just start picking up massive damage. You have room to play with your last slot. You can go Stone Edge. You can go, like I said before, you can go Crunch. I like Stone Edge a lot. Hits those flying types that are tend to be a tad bit annoying to hit in this metagame. But you also can have just the Flare Blitz if you're saying, you know what, I don't want to risk missing this Sacred Fire. I really just want to send off big damage right now. I'll send off a Flare Blitz. I think that's a really cool option as well. And then for the spread, guys, I, I really don't know what you're supposed to do here. Excuse me. You can just kind of send it with max attack, max speed. You could send it with max attack, max HP, which is probably less than optimal because you get more out of investing into defenses and into special defenses. So I wouldn't, I would probably, if you're going to look into bulking this thing up, I would look into doing something along these lines first. Like, these are just random numbers, guys, but, you know, invest in the defenses before you invest in that HP. Like, if you're saying you don't need speed, invest in the defenses first before you just throw in the HP. You get more value out of it. But if, I, but honestly, if I'm just going to be a choice man at Ente and I'm just going to go spam things and I'm going to do big damage, I'm probably just going to want to go fast, right? 152 actually allows me to be faster. Allows me to be faster than most of the than all adamant Urshifus, which is a chance that maybe I can burn them before they get a surging strikes off and just allow myself to survive there. There is basically a ton of options just by being this fast. That's really, really nice. You probably can drop it down to 150. But at that point, am I losing speed ties to other Ente? Maybe. Like I said, this spread is meant to go fast. It's meant to do damage. Uh, you can cater this to your needs. But this is the one that, 
in my opinion, is probably the most slappable beside a Shen Pao, because you're just like, haha, big damage, go burr. We've seen it work with Dragonite for years, and now you're seeing Entei follow suit with just a little bit better type synergy with Shen Pao. Set 2 is the, kind of the middle ground, you know, you still want this thing to be amazing, an amazing powerhouse, especially beside that Shen Pao, because I think that's where Entei really shines, right? I'm gonna, a lot of this is beside Shen Pao, like, you're gonna find me saying that quite often. Because that's where I think it shines the most, right? Like you get, you take advantage of that. You just get that extra chunk on the attack, you know, and that's massive for Entei. Entei really, really appreciates that. And, you know, once again, you're going to go with your standard here, your Sacred Fire, your Stomping Tantrum, your E-Speed. You're probably still going to go Terra Normal because Terra Normal E-Speed is disgusting. It is an incredibly, incredibly strong option. And then you just go Life Orb because you don't want to necessarily say, you don't want to be locked in to that one move. You want to be able to switch the moves up. And I think that's an incredibly strong option. Life Orb just keeps good damage output as well. And then you just have the ability to protect. This feels incredible, guys. I was testing Ente. I was actually running the Life Orb set. It felt really nice. That's only because I didn't really want to utilize Band, right? But, like, once again, I just modified this a little bit. And I know I said earlier that you would invest in defenses before you invest in HP. This was just to invest in the HP so that the Life Orb chip, I'm always taking 19 points. But I have more HP, but I'm still taking 19 points of damage. It's technically optimal for Life Orb. Once again, that is a very... Min minuscule thing it doesn't really matter in the long run if you're looking for more bulk out of the 76 evs you have you would definitely do this the other way right and you would invest into defenses but i'm more focused on this set on optimizing for that life orb chip damage that's coming back my way because i'm gonna get hit by that life orb chip right i'm gonna be launching attacks so if i can optimize that it just feels a tad bit better and then i just kind of sent speed once again i think the speed tier on ente is the biggest room to play that's where you have the biggest room and the biggest room to shift back and forth. And you're going to see that on set three, where I really didn't know what to do with the speed. I'll get into that in a minute. Uh, once again, just kind of sat at 143 here. Don't know why I did. I just figured, you know, it was still going to go fast because I'm a life orb set. Still want to hit as fast as I possibly can. Do some big damage while I'm at it. And, you know, it just felt right to me. Once again, though, this is kind of that middle ground, right? Incredible offense, still strong offense. And then you can play it slowly. And you can go with the Assault Vest set. Now, I would still recommend pairing this with Beside a Shen Pao. I think that's still a strong option. That synergy is incredibly, incredibly strong. But this one doesn't necessarily need to have that. I don't think any of them necessarily need it. But they definitely appreciate having the Shen Pao beside them. Right? And here you want to go Terra Grass, in my opinion. Because you are going to try and be that bulky piece. Right? You're going to try and live things. And Sacred Fire, Stomping Tantrum, E-Speed. And the move sets don't necessarily change. Right? You're still running that Sacred Fire, that Tantrum, that E-Speed. In this case, I like Snarl. I think AV Snarl is a really, really cool tool to have, especially in a format that where Fluttermane kind of creeps in. You know, those special attackers start creeping in, the Raging Bolts as well. You know, you just have that ability to Snarl them when they're there, and it just aids the rest of your team rather than solely relying on doing big damage with the Ente. You know, now I can potentially threaten to burn, and I can potentially just drop your special attack, which is actually guaranteed if I connect the move, right? And that alone feels pretty good right i pressure down to physical attackers because they don't really want to be on the field and risk a burn the special attackers don't really want to be on the field because they're going to get snarled and i have an assault vest so all in all that's where the snarl i think really helps this set i do think if you're going to run assault vest ente you really do want snarl uh move set uh sorry ev set nothing really too crazy right now obviously i hit that second bump on the uh, attack stat just to get as much attack as i can because yes i have 115 attack stat but I still want to hit hard. Yes, I want this piece to be bulky, but I still want to be able to actually do the damage that I need to do, and hitting 196 felt correct to me. Uh, once again, this speed tier was realistically where I wasn't sure where to go, right? But 20 and 100 in HP and special defense, that's basically going to make sure Shadow Ball from Specs Fluttermane at 116 special attack modest is, ne is never going to two-shot you. It is always going to be a three-shot, unless, of course, they get the drop. But at that point, if they get the drop, you cry a little bit. But don't worry about that. Um, right? This is where you can definitely bulk this up more and say, hey, I'm meant to be bulky. Let's slow this thing right down and go from there. I just didn't know where to hit with the speed tier because the format is still so young. Right? Like, obviously, I like the concept of, you know, those bulkier ogre ponds, right? They kind of hover around the 134 mark. So being faster than that felt pretty good to me as well. You know, get the threaten to burn onto them before they're capable of actually getting an IV cudgel off into me, which felt pretty good, right? And at that point, once I was this high in speed, I figured maybe I can just keep my offense going, become as fast as I want, right? I hit 144, and 144 was basically to outpace the adamant Landos 
that don't really exist right now, right? That adamant lander Therian isn't a thing in the format, right? Those Hisuian Arcanines that I would normally outpace by going one for 143 aren't a thing in the format right now. There is tons of room to play with this speed. You can definitely drop this. You can say, you know what? Most Ogre Ponds are probably going to be faster than me anyways. There's no point in having this speed. Let's slow it right down. And I don't know how low you really necessarily want to go. Maybe those, maybe for like the odd gold dango that comes back into the play, they hit like the 131 mark 10 uh, more often than not. So maybe you sit this at 132, 133, right? There's tons of options. Maybe the max speed modest gold dango is the one you want to hit. That hits 136. So you'd want to hit 137 to outpace that and speed creep that, right? There's tons of options for this speed tier. You can find a spot that sits nicely for your team. I just kind of left it here because I didn't really find any like insanely different calcs defensively so I just kind of dumped it into the speed with whatever I had left maybe you don't need more defensive calcs but you say I want that extra little bit of chip damage maybe you lower and you just max out your attack right basically what I'm saying is there's tons of rooms to play with this assault vest ente set right and because of that I didn't really I, I don't want to recommend just taking this spread and saying this is going to be a really solid spread moving forward. I personally don't think this spread is amazing. I think this spread hits like two calcs that I wanted it to hit, and it's probably going to work. But this spread can 100% be better, and I'll be 100% honest on that one. If you're looking to just take an Entei and slap it on a team, I, I do advise going Choice Band. It's probably the most consistent set, you know, besides Champao. Like I said, it functions similar to that Dragonite, just with a better type synergy with that Champao. Obviously, you do lose a little bit of attacking power because you have a less of, a of an attack stat. But all in all, I feel like the type synergy makes up for that lack of damage. Um, makes up for that lack of damage, you know? You're not picking quite as many things off with Terra Normal E Speed. But at the same time, you have that better type synergy, so you don't know, like I said, you don't necessarily need to m care that you're missing the knockout, right? Maybe you just protect the Champau and Sacred Fire. Maybe you just don't go for E speed, right? It's a lot less, I'm going to tear a normal E speed dependent, but it's still very much so an option that you can definitely utilize if the opportunity presents itself for this team. So if you're looking to slap an Entei on a team, I think Choice Band or Life Orb are two, by far the two ways to go. That's probably where you're going to capitalize on slapping Entei the most. However, do not sleep on an Assault Vest variant of an Entei. That becomes a lot bulkier, right? You don't, you'll tear grass, you ignore the redirection from Amoongus, you can't get put to sleep. You all of a sudden resist Urshifu's, and then you just threaten back with a Sacred Fire burn, right? There's a lot of options and a lot of good that can come out of a bulkier Assault Vest Entei. And I think I really wanted to mention it, and that's why it's here. But in terms of the spread, there are so many more opportunities to optimize this and cater this to whatever team you're utilizing. I recommend looking at the spread. If you're going to try an Assault Vest one, you can start with this. But as you play with the team a little more, if you decide you like Assault Vest, definitely look back at the spread and say, hey, what can I, what can do better here? What can cater this and they towards my team better? Uh, don't. I, I hope you don't look at this spread and go, oh, Ryan said this was a good spread. It's bad because I don't think it's a good spread. Is it a good starting point? Absolutely. Do I think there's a ton of room to play? A hundred percent. Once again, though, that's going to do it for the Entei guide, guys. There is tons of opportunity. Entei has incredible synergy with Shen Pao. So I know I talked about, oh, Entei plus Shen Pao so much. But that's just because the synergy there is so, so strong. We saw it win the Tommy Tour back on Wednesday, and that had 764 players. There's a reason Entei plus Shen Pao. There's a reason I'm bringing this up. There's a reason it's so strong. There's a reason it's so good. Right? I believe that Entei was also a Salt Vest on that team as well. So like I said, there is tons of options with Entei. I think it's an incredibly strong option. The main problem I find is you have to give up your fire type slot for it. I don't recommend running double fire. I mean, you can go ahead and do it if you think it suits your team. But giving up your fire type slot for an Entei is one of those ones where as an instant player, as a balanced player myself, it's like, I would just rather go instant. But hey, Entei has a really lot of strong options. That was not English. That was not a sentence, but it's fine. Entei has a lot of strong options for you to utilize. Definitely try it out if you're looking for a more offensive fight. Excuse me, a more offensive fire type piece. But with that, I'm going to get on out of here. Thank you all so much for checking out the video. But with that, if you guys do enjoy this type of content, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe. Thank you again so much for watching, and I'll catch you all in a future video.